What if I told you that a brand new, billion dollar stealth fighter could get hunted and shot down by a jet built over a decade ago? It sounds like something out of a movie, but the Chinese Air Force has been practicing a startling new strategy that turns their older planes into surprisingly effective hunters. So, how exactly are they doing it? For years, we've been told one thing. The country with the best stealth fighters owns the sky. Jets like the American F-22 and F-35 are seen as the top of the food chain, invisible ghosts that can strike without ever being seen. Their tech, their sensors, their networking, it all defined what a fifth-generation fighter is supposed to be. They're the kings. But what if that's no longer the whole story? A new way of thinking is emerging from Asia, and it isn't about building a better stealth jet. It's about finding a craftier way to kill one. The first clue that the age of stealth invincibility might be over didn't come from some secret spy report, but from China's own state-run TV. In a documentary celebrating their military, they made a stunning claim. A 4.5-generation J-10C fighter jet had managed to beat a stealth aircraft in a simulated battle. This wasn't a fluke, it was the first time a J-10C unit had ever pulled off a practice kill against a more advanced jet in a realistic exercise. The target in this mock battle was shown as a silhouette that looked suspiciously like China's own J-20 Mighty Dragon, their best stealth fighter and a direct competitor to the F-22 and F-35. So how on earth could a J-10C, a capable but older and definitely not stealthy plane, win that fight? In a classic one-on-one -on -one dogfight, it would be toast. The J-20, like its American cousins, is built to see its enemy long before it can be seen. The J-10C pilot, Major Xiao Nan, described what happened. He fired a missile, but then his screens went totally blank, he'd lost the target. He figured he was either up against a stealth plane or getting hit with heavy electronic jamming. By any normal logic, the fight was over for him, and his missile was flying blind. But moments later, the ground crew confirmed a hit. The missile found its mark. The pilot didn't credit his own plane, he credited the system. As he put it, without the support of the system, there would be no chance. But with the system support, the J-10C is still at its prime. That's the secret right there. This wasn't one jet versus another. It was one jet versus an entire, interconnected team. The strategy that makes this all possible is called a kill chain, and China is turning it into an art form with something they call system of systems warfare. The idea is pretty simple. Instead of one plane doing everything, you link a bunch of different assets together so the team is way deadlier than any single part. The J-10C didn't actually need to see the stealth fighter. Something else did. The MVP of this whole play is the KJ-500, an airborne early warning and control aircraft, basically a flying command center with a giant, powerful radar strapped to its back. A stealth fighter is shaped to deflect radar waves from another fighter jet, but it's a lot harder to hide from the massive radar dish of a plane like the KJ-500, especially when it's looking down from way up high. Even US military commanders have pointed to the KJ-500 as a key piece of China's long-range threat. In that exercise, the KJ-500 spotted the J-20 and acted as the quarterback for the whole engagement. It sent a stream of data with the stealth jet's exact location directly to the J-10C pilot in real time. The pilot was essentially seeing through the KJ-500's eyes. His own jet became little more than a launch pad, what the military calls a missile truck. He didn't need to get his own radar locked, he just had to fly to the right spot and let the missile rip. This tactic, using another platform's sensors to guide your weapon, is called cooperative targeting, and it's the core of China's new playbook. But just launching the missile is the easy part. Where it gets really clever is how the missile finds its way home. The J-10C is armed with advanced long-range missiles, most likely the PL-15. These aren't just fire and forget weapons, they're smart munitions that stay connected to the network. Here's how the kill chain closes. The J-10C pilot, getting data from the KJ-500, fires the PL-15 in the stealth fighter's direction. Right after launching, the pilot can bank away and get out of danger, minimizing his risk. The missile, now flying on its own, doesn't just go dumb. It keeps getting updated coordinates from the network, 
mainly from the KJ-500 AWACS. So even as the stealth fighter is dodging and trying to jam everything, the AWACS is tracking it and whispering new directions to the missile in mid-flight. This is the phase where Major Xiao Nan said he lost his own radar contact. His plane was blind, but the network wasn't. The AWACS, and maybe even electronic warfare jets like the J-16D, kept the missile warm, guiding it closer and closer. Then, for the grand finale, the terminal phase, the missile's own tiny but powerful AESA radar seeker switches on. It opens its eyes, as the pilot put it. By that point, the missile is so close that even a stealthy design isn't enough to stop it from getting a lock. The target is lit up, tracked, and taken out, often without any warning at all. If you're finding this look into the tactics of modern air combat as fascinating as I do, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. We're always breaking down the future of warfare, and you don't want to miss what we have coming up. This wasn't just a publicity stunt, it was a peek into a whole new way China thinks about war. They call it systems confrontation, a strategy where you don't just fight plane on plane, but system on system. The goal is to paralyze your enemy by taking out their entire network of command, control, and intelligence. In this new kind of warfare, everyone has a job. The J-10C is the shooter, but it's part of a team. The KJ-500 AWACS is the eyes and the quarterback. And there's another key player on the field. Electronic warfare jets like the J-16D. The J-16D's mission is to blind and deafen the enemy. It can jam the stealth fighter's own powerful radar, mess with its communications, and generally create chaos, making it an even easier target for the network attack. This system of systems approach changes everything. It means a huge fleet of older, cheaper 4.5 generation jets can still be incredibly dangerous on a modern battlefield. China has over 240 J-10Cs, and they form the backbone of their air force. Instead of trying to build hundreds of expensive stealth fighters to match their rivals, they can supercharge their existing fleet, turning every plane into a deadly node in a bigger web. It's a direct challenge to the Western approach of building small numbers of extremely pricey, high-tech jets. China's strategy suggests that today, quantity, when plugged into a smart network, has a quality all its own. This strategy isn't just staying within China's borders. Beijing's close ally, Pakistan, is reportedly putting similar tactics to use. There are unconfirmed reports that the Pakistan Air Force is using its own Chinese-made J-10Cs, linked to their AWACS planes, in a similar networked fashion. According to some accounts of recent skirmishes with the Indian Air Force, by connecting their J-10s to a mix of Chinese and Swedish AWACS, Pakistani pilots were allegedly able to fire long-range PL-15 missiles while keeping their own radars off, effectively hiding from their opponents. This spread of networked warfare is a big deal for the global military balance. For the US and its allies, it's not just about having the stealthiest plane anymore. The new battlefront is the electromagnetic spectrum, the invisible data links that hold this new way of war together. The logical counter is to find ways to break that kill chain. That means jamming the KJ-500's radar, cutting the data streams between the AWACS and the fighters, and attacking the network itself. The future of air combat might be less about high-speed dogfights and more about a silent, digital battle of hide and seek. He who controls the network, controls the sky. China's demonstration that its older J-10C fighters can, with help, take down a top-tier stealth jet is a major signal of a shift in military thinking. It suggests the era of the all-powerful, lone wolf platform is ending, and the age of system-centric warfare has begun. Beijing isn't trying to make its old jets individually better than an F-35. It's trying to make its entire combat system better. By weaving together command posts like the KJ-500, electronic jammers like the J-16D, and smart missiles, China has turned its legacy fleet into a serious threat to even the most advanced aircraft in the world. The age of the lone fighter ace may be over. The future of air combat is a battle of networks, and the big question is. Who will control the data, and who will get left flying blind? Let us know what you think in the comments.